Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Noreen and I create tutorial videos, paintings, and art supply reviews. So today I wanted to try some hot press paper. This is the Baohong or the Meaden Block uh, watercolor paper pad. I have reviewed the cold pressed version of this paper before and I'll link that in the card. Um, so I also ordered the hot press and I wanted to give it a try. So the difference between cold press and hot pressed paper is basically the texture. So they should be treated the same way um, in terms of sizing and um, how the paper performs uh, as far as like how much water it can take. Uh, but the texture of cold pressed paper is more rough than hot pressed paper, which should be very smooth. So this actually came with a cool green bone folder. And the way a block works is the sides are glued down, so you don't have to tape it down. And when you're ready, you just slide your bone folder or a palette knife in there and pull the paper up. So. I don't have the bone folder that it came with because I'm not sure where I put it, but I will just use a palette knife for now and get this top sheet off and then we'll test it out. So as you can see, I'm not sure if you can tell, but it is very smooth, almost like copy paper. Um, there's hardly any texture at all and definitely not anything that I can feel. You can sort of see the paper texture if you're looking at it real close, um, but definitely not as rough as the cold press paper. So this will be interesting. I was thinking we could do a little pumpkin. Uh, since it is officially fall, at least here in Michigan, so let's get started. Um, if you'll notice, I actually have three different pumpkins here um, because the sketch that I did, I really liked that sketch, um, but then I didn't hit record when I ended up painting the first layer, so I redid the method that I used to put down the water and the paint on a new sketch, which I ended up not liking how that turned out. So I went back to the first pumpkin and continued the recording from that point uh, with the second and third layers. So, you know, mistakes happen and we just gotta roll with it. One of the first things I noticed right away was that the paint itself seemed to actually stay put, which was not at all what I expected. Um, with cold pressed paper, you have those little ridges that I always thought helped to hold the paint. Um, it certainly helps show granulation because the, um, the pigments that are granulating tend to stick in the middle of those ridges, right? But on the cold or on the hot press paper, of course, the granulation didn't show up very much. Um, but at the same time, the paint itself didn't seem to move very much. And the other interesting thing was that it also moved more as it was drying. So it doesn't move a lot when you first put it down. Um, you know, when you're doing wet and wet, you kind of expect the paint to feather out and spread out a little bit, which it does on cold pressed paper. And it did not do that on the hot pressed paper. But as it dried, I noticed it would slowly start to creep into the other areas. So for me, that was really unexpected and something that I would definitely have to get used to if I were to continue working with the hot press paper. You know, I've always heard that hot press paper is great for portrait work um, because of the fine texture, you can get some really fine details that come out very sharp and crisp and precise. I definitely 
noticed that uh, ability uh, of the paint on this paper. I think because it doesn't move as much, um, you can really be more precise with where you're putting color and where it will end up. Um, I personally prefer watercolor to be very fluid. I like that movement a lot, but if you're more into um, realism or portraits, I think this is a really great paper for you to use. I did like how you could see the brush strokes, um, especially on the second and third layers when I was doing um, the glazing over the like sections of the pumpkin. Um, I thought that was a really neat effect and not necessarily something that I see very often in my work on cold press paper. I also noticed that it didn't seem to take the water very well and if you've seen any of my other videos where I use the cold press paper from the same brand um, it can take a ton of water a ton of abuse a ton of paint and layers and it doesn't really warp that much it doesn't degrade that much however the cold press paper seemed to be a lot more delicate um, some of the areas where I was moving wet paint around almost seemed to degrade a little bit now I'm not sure if it's the brand or if it's a factor of cold press or sorry hot press paper in general so uh, that was very interesting not something I really want to see but definitely something that you would want to be uh, aware of when you're working with this type of paper overall I am not a huge fan of the hot press paper However, I know a lot of people that do really like working on it, and that's because it works with their style. And I think the paper itself is great. It is 100% cotton, so it's great for watercolor. It does take a lot of water. Um, it handled all of the layers really well. And, you know, if you have a style that's more precise and more refined and more detailed, I think this paper would be great for you, especially if you like to do portraits. If you're someone who prefers to paint more loosely and just sort of play with the paint on the page, um, then I would say that the cold press paper is probably going to be better for you. So overall, not a bad paper. Not really for me, but I'm going to keep working with it and see if maybe you know, I can come up with some better techniques that would have a better result. If you like this video, please let me know by leaving a comment, like the video, and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.